This is a fifth estate winning headlines. Your media police post coming to you from Nairobi, Kenya, from the Fort Hall School of Government. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you may have missed this morning. But we also take a look at some of the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 2nd of March 2021 and I am 2M. I am JM. And I am Miss K, your host. Again, in case you missed today's headlines, here they are. Daily Nation, inside a vaccine rollout plan. The standard, people to watch as vaccine lands. And finally, the star, why beating your spouse could land you in big trouble. Mm. Um, I think before we take a look at today's headlines, we'd like to give you a small commentary. Yes, yes, yes. Once again, let me begin. I will discuss William Ruto's comedy of errors. His approach of pursuing the presidency using the Kifua method is completely misguided. Let me explain by way of a story inspired by Dave Trott. Mm -hmm. During the 17th century, a German scientist claimed that it was the movement of trees that created wind. His proof? When the trees moved their branches, there was always wind. Mm -hmm. When the trees were still, there was no wind. <laughs> wind was the movement of air, so something must be moving it. Absolutely. Perfect logic. It yes. makes sense. Yes. <laughs> but being logical doesn't mean it's true. Yeah. Because we know it's exactly the other way around. Yes. Yeah. The German scientist joined up the right dots, yes. but in the wrong order. Yes. <laughs> wind moves trees, yes. not vice versa. You're correct. But for him, this flawed logic was seductive. Yes. And similarly, William Ruto's logic around how to become president appears uh, just as flawed. Yes. And apparently, it, it, you know, it appears seductive to him. Yes. So according to the Ruto cookbook, if he curates a brand of approachability and likability, he will be deemed reputable. Yes. If he claims trust, Kikuyus will trust him. This is what he's thinking. Right. If he claims reliability, Kikuyus will believe he is reliable. But what Ruto does not understand is that you don't just get a reputation uh, just by claiming something. Yes. First, you must be something. Then you get a reputation and then you can claim it. Yes. And a good example here is Volkswagen. Oh, yes. So Volkswagen didn't get a reputation uh, for being reliable by running a brand campaign claiming that it was reliable. Yes. When they started in the year 1937, they ran advertisements saying, for instance, unlike every other car, we are small, inexpensive and sensible. Yes. They sold the product, mm -hmm. not the brand. Yes. And then over the years, people came to associate VW with durability mm -hmm. and dependability. Yes. And so therefore, 50 years on, VW could now run the campaign saying if only everything in life was as reliable as a Volkswagen. Yes. <laughs> so here is a political marketing 101 lesson for William Ruto. Yes. First, you create the product. Yes. The product then creates the experience. Yes. The experience creates the reputation. Yes. And finally, the reputation creates the brand. Yes. Don't begin with brand, begin with product. Yes. We challenge you, William Ruto, yes. <laughs> to show Kikuyu, yeah. Kikuyu's rather, your true colors. Yes. Show us <laughs> what William Ruto is made of. We dare you. <laughs> I like this. And it's not a pretty sight. Well, <laughs> once he opens the bonnet, by the way, yeah. rotten to the core. <laughs> Gosh. I believe it. He, he should start with the right order of dots. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Today I will be brief. And in keeping with yesterday's memo to Parliament, I'd like again to appeal to members of Parliament to make a bold decision. The message is the same. Kenya should adopt a parliamentary system. In fact, we would like to say that Parliament is the only institution that will stop country from fighting in 2022. Here's how. If you go to an election, as is with Ruto and Raila butting heads, this country will go to the dogs. Mm. Ruto has stirred up a class war. Raila still has 44% of the country. Question is, if people have already died in Moranga because of a Ruto rally, if people's cars are being burnt by people chanting Hustler Nation, if people are saying Raila has to be president because he is not Kikuyu or Kalenjin, how will Kenya look in 2022? How careless would we be if we let all the investments we have made since 2013 go up in smoke? From SGR to expressways, to hospitals, to power generation investments, to airports, to skyscrapers, 
Why would we watch country imploding and yet we can save it? Mm. If we lost one trillion shillings in a matter of days in 2017, if the stock exchange lost over a hundred billion shillings, just a matter of hours, shareholder wealth lost just because of an election, why would we watch ourselves headed for the same way or the same way and do nothing about it now? Wouldn't that be insanity? Mm. Mm. Parliament, what country is asking of you, is a working electoral system. A system that markets can predict. A system that is not volatile. A system that insulates the smallest unit of existence from external shocks. That's right. Bottom line mm -hmm. is Kenya in 20 years time is said to be Africa's largest economy. And those are not our words. Ask Richard Quest in London. Whether or true or not, Kenya is not in a place to slacken. If we are to achieve economic prosperity, contested presidential elections should be a thing of the past. Yeah, yeah. Parliament, we must have no presidential election in 2022. I couldn't agree with you more. But I'd like to take us back to the headlines just for a moment yeah. because today both the Daily Nation and the Standard speak to the fact that the COVID-19 vaccine is finally here. Yeah. Kenya is set to receive its first batch of COVID-19 vaccines early tomorrow. Mm. In fact, they say that 1.02 million AstraZeneca vaccine doses will arrive from the Serum Institute of India as part of the 24 million doses ordered to vaccinate 20% of of our population. Mm. And so with this development, Kenya has now joined more than 10 other countries that have so far received consignments of COVID-19 vaccines. These countries include South Africa, Egypt, Morocco, Ghana, Ivory Coast and Ethiopia. In fact, the vaccine, for those who don't know, is recommended in two doses of 0.5 milliliters, mm. given intramuscularly. So they mm. put it into your muscles. Guess okay. where? And yes, the yes. WHO <laughs> recommends an <laughs> interval of 8 to 12 weeks between between the doses. Yeah. So the vaccines arriving tomorrow will form the first phase of our vaccine drive. The second phase is expected to run from July 2021 to June next year and to target close to 10 million Kenyans, those who are vulnerable, so above the age of 50 years, and those above 18 years but with underlying health conditions. Mm. The third phase of, phase of vaccination is expected to run from as early as next year and to target 5 million Kenyans. Yeah. The official launch of the vaccination drive will happen this Friday and priority access will be given to our biggest complainers, frontline health <laughs> workers. Well, I think that it's a good thing. We Last week we did a book, it was titled Pandemic Century by yeah. Mark Honingsbaum. Go yeah. read it. And in his final chapter on COVID-19, he said that for him, a vaccine is a necessity because knowledge and immunization from infection is not clear. Yes. So I guess we're on the path to full economic recovery and a mask free life. Mm. Can't Absolutely. wait. Absolutely. So we have a three part criteria that we use to break down the headlines for you. We ask ourselves three questions. Is the yeah. headline topical or speculative, repetitive or groundbreaking and thoughtful or just plain lazy? Yes. No offense to the star and wife battery, which is a serious thing, but I will toss it. Yeah, yeah, excellent. No offense to the standard, but I will also toss it. I think the Daily Nation excellent. for being positive and Absolutely. gives us our winning headline. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. On to the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. And just like the headlines, we have a three-part criteria that we use to judge the cartoons for you. We ask ourselves, is it humorous or dry, satirical or pessimistic, and effective or just plain lazy? Daily you have, Nation. You have Ndula mm. there, caricature of President Uru Kenyatta whistling, and he's just opening the door. And uh, next to him is uh, David Murade, mm -hmm. Secretary General of Jubilee in shorts. And he is going to serve an eviction notice to William Ruto. Seems like... David Murray has been uh, oh. watching Fifth Estate. I missed uh, William Butter's head in the corner over there. Yes. Just peeping. Just, 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 just Yes. <laughs> Good and, one. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that and, should be a and, and, and the, the, the point there is you can see where the footmarks are heading. <laughs> <laughs> of course, they're his. Uh, you know? But they were trying to say who they are from, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. But great cartoon. Great cartoon. I think we put it in the parking bay. Let's see what's in Schemers. the standard Excellent. and the star. Excellent. Gado, uh, the standard. You have uh, American Civil Society lining up to get a stimulus check. Uh, first in line looks like capitalists, second is refugees, the third employed, unemployed. Uh, Democracy is uh, fourth there, unemployed people, so, social justice, human rights, and the list goes on. And I think, what, Americans are getting a, a check of about $1,400 uh, to stimulate their economy. 
And that's what Gado is trying to tell us here. Just toss this one. I think it's right. a rubbish cartoon. So toss it immediately. Toss it, toss it, please. Finally, in the star. Excellent. Uh, the star is a drawing of a plane that has landed in Africa, and the drawing is Kovacs. What did you call it, Mrs. K? AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca. And yes, it's a ray of hope for Africans, poor Africans. They couldn't develop a vaccine for themselves, so someone wow. else had to do it for them. Mm. And um, the caption there is a long awaited landing. Africa finally has a vaccine. What happened to us sometimes? I mean, come on, Camry, you don't have to wait for Indians and Chinese and Israelis to do a vaccine. You can do it yourselves. Then yeah. why are they there in the first place? I'd say we toss the car that particular cartoon. Yeah, and the way. Daily Nation gives us our winning cartoon. Absolutely. And now our final thought, it is inspired by a book entitled The Penguin and the Leviathan, How Cooperation Triumphs Over Self-Interest by Yoshai Benkler. The theme this week is trust in a modern society. And as he has said, our book today is The Penguin and the Leviathan by Yoshai Benkler. Yoshai is an Israeli-American author. He's also a professor at Harvard Law School and a co-director in the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Society. The Leviathan in his title, I'll talk about his title because I think it's interesting, mm. borrows from the book, the 1651 book, The Leviathan by yes. Thomas Hobbes. Absolutely. Where, and this is the quote that he relies on, the philosopher said, people are so selfish that they need a strong government to prevent them from destroying themselves. Mm. While the penguin in the title refers to the logo used by Linux, an open software company that has grown precisely as a result of developers working together mm. or cooperatively. Mm. So the inspiration between the Thomas Hobbes quote is the assumption that human beings are universally selfish and the only way to deal with people is for government to step in and yeah. control us yeah. so that we do not in our short-sighted pursuit of self-interest yes. destroy one another. Yes. And I think this is a purely fifth estate thought. Yes. But he says that in the last decade yeah. through um, the although the roots of the current trend to date back to the 18, 1980s, yeah. a series of changes has triggered a fundamental shift away from this theory of universal selfishness. Mm. And they say that the success of collaborative efforts such as Wikipedia, I hope you know this is why you don't quote it, everybody yeah. puts into it, yeah. and Linux mm. and community policing in places like Chicago, there's a significant trend or significant evidence that points to a predisposition for cooperation by human beings. Mm. In fact, he says that there are hundreds of studies that have been conducted in numerous disciplines across dozens of societies and that a basic pattern has emerged. And in any given experiment, a large minority of people, he says, about 30%, mm. behave as though they are really selfish. Mm. And they are really as selfish as the mainstream analogy assumes. Mm. But half the people, that's 50%, systematically, significantly, and predictively, predictively mm. behave cooperatively. Yes. Some of them behave cooperatively conditionally yes. that is mm. they will treat kindness with kindness mm. and meanness with, with meanness yes. others are unconditional cooperators or mm. altruists who cooperate even when it comes at personal cost yes. i do hope that i fall into that category but mm. all of my life i know that i will be with the conditional ones if you're nice i'll be nice and if you're bad i'll be horrible mm. <laughs> the book is generally <laughs> well written and i'm inspired to trust society more and to become more altruistic. And maybe, maybe <clears throat> Thomas Hobbes was wrong and life is not as nasty, brutish and, and short yes. as we think it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know you know what, um, uh, Mrs. K, I somewhat agree with this book and somewhat disagree with it. And you know why? I'm going to use the book um, um, by Adam Smith, um, no, the concept the Invisible Hand by Adam Smith. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and the theory behind this is that we as human beings are inherently selfish, you know, we're inherently selfish and, uh, and if you're inherently selfish, we are doing things for our own self-interest, but to help someone else uh, out there and, and, and therefore the environment is, is a mutually advantageous, you know, the result is a mutually advantageous So I'm still uh, self-interested so when I'm yes, being cooperative. Absolutely. Mm. So you're you still end up helping someone else, but uh, you still remain selfish. That's how we are as human beings. Anyway, JM, sorry. <laughs> let, let me let me say something. Uh, yeah. uh, something about about this book. Yeah. Um, 
And what he says is that uh, when moving men to do something, when guiding human action, self-interest is only part of the story. Yeah. Uh, and up until now, scientists uh, long thought that self-interest is pretty much the only thing that motivates us um, uh, to, to act. Mm. Uh, but he says it's not always about a handsome reward. Mm. And he gives a real world example from Europe, mm. recycling. Mm. Uh, and researchers found out that in cities with recycling programs, compliance is much higher mm. when the municipalities do curbside pickup, that is when they pick up the trash outside your homes, mm. rather than requiring residents to take recyclables over to some central location. Yes. Uh, and this intuitively, he says, makes sense. Uh, and the reason it does is because you're more likely mm. uh, to comply with a, a, a regulation mm. uh, when it's made more convenient um, you know, to, to do so. So convenience, therefore, turns out to be uh, quite an important factor in determining uh, compliance, he says here. Um, and you know, he even talks a little bit about uh, disincentives. Yeah. Um, so if you move even away from the incentives to the disincentives, uh, you, you know, in some municipalities, for example, across the world, they do impose fines. Um, you know, else in some parts they say, uh, do not dump here. But those uh, will usually end up backfiring, um, you know, and, and they'll end up being uh, uh, not being adhered to. Uh, so, so, so the idea here is really the bottom line is, is, is compliance. Yes. Um, and it, this is something that I grew up with in, in my household as a child. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that uh, we had a few rules at home, uh, as any child usually does growing up, you know, you have to make your bed, for example. Uh, <laughs> but the, 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 the genius of, of my mom yeah. uh, uh, was to make it very simple to comply. So, for instance, she didn't give us, you know, you go to your average Kenyan home, eh? yeah. and the bedroom, first of all, if you, if you tell your child, for yeah. example, yeah. you must make your bed in the morning, yeah. it's really a nightmare, yeah. because the bed has been squashed at the end of the wall, it's a very heavy bed, it weighs like 50 kilograms, it's ridiculous, it has a thick mattress, which is actually overflowing from the bed itself. So yeah. to stuff your little fingers. To, to in stuff there. your little fingers. This is the average Kenyan home, yeah? Yeah. yeah. yeah? It has two <laughs> fitted sheets. I don't know who, who even invented, uh, no, sorry, not fitted, yeah. but, but flat sheets, you yeah. know? Yeah. Flat sheets are like the worst thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> so now you put like two flat sheets, then there's a blanket you're supposed to put there. And then now you put the duvet cover and you tell your child you're supposed to make your bed in the Every morning. Day. They're never going to comply. Yeah. So what in our case, what we got, we got a, a fitted sheet, which yeah. is much simpler. Yeah. And then just one duvet cover. Yeah. And That's then it. you put the bed in the center of the room. Yeah. Within 30 seconds, you've made your bed. You have complied with, yeah. with the law. And I think uh, this is really the, the lesson for all regulators, for all governments. If you want people to comply make with, it with so laws, ridiculously make stupid. it so, so simple to comply, make it so convenient. And if it is, uh, your compliance rates are going to go way shooting up. all the yeah. way up. So th that's the, the, the one thing, I, the big thing I took away from this book. And it's something that I think we can even apply in our personal lives. I love it. Mm. Now, there's a company uh, called Chongqing in China. Now, this company produces more than 40% of the motorcycles made in China. No small feat given that China produces more than half the world's motorcycles. Anyway, Chongqing was born in 1990 when a young entrepreneur named Zhou Zongshen began to sell engines he had assembled from spare parts in his repair shop. At the time, the government-owned motorcycle industry was selling parts so cheaply that all the parts for an engine could be individually bought for several hundred won less than an assembled uh, motorcycle. Mm. So he began assembling motorcycles. Zongshen saw the opportunity to make a tidy profit and money he made. By the time his practice was discovered by the Chinese government, he had already uh, set up a backup system in place. He had created a network of 300 small shops which would mm. sell him what he needed. These suppliers uh, in turn engaged in a form of cooperative competition. Mm. They met face to face in their face to face in tea houses and uh, probably also on the internet to discuss improvements and cost reductions and built an informal and completely functional business that allowed them to innovate in small mm. ways and uh, and also make better engines at lower cost. Mm. than what the, actually, what the government industry could make. Yeah. And here's how it worked. One of his suppliers would approach him and say, uh, I can lower my cost by X percent mm. if you could move that piece two centimeters to the left. 
to which the response might uh, be I can move it to two centimeters to the left so and so over there can make his pipe more flexible by a factor of n and so forth mm -hmm. it was a collaborative effort in in, in um, you know in, in totality and that's the power of collaboration mm -hmm. So in the end, you do think that we can collaborate, if at all, the thing yeah. that we're meant to collaborate on is yeah. made so easy that yes. we will definitely have to do it. Uh, well, absolutely. But that was uh, China then. You're making small little yeah. parts. The government is trying to incentivize, uh, uh, you know, the making of these motorcycles or motorcycle parts. But then you have someone who's thinking further than the government saying, I can buy from government the small parts at a cheap price, make uh, uh, more motorbikes than government. And by the time the government is trying to, you know, clamp down on him, mm. he already has another setup somewhere else that is, you know, that's... But right now you try and do that. You that's why I'm caught. saying the invisible hand is a way to go. Let, get, let everyone stick to their lane. Somehow things will balance out at the end or in the end. Today we had a winning headline when it was a double whammy. We had a winning headline from the Daily Nation and a winning cartoon from the Daily Nation as well. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're also on your TV screens. You can find us on Pam, Free to Air, Go TV, and Star Times. On um, self interest, mm -hmm. I will give you a quote by a gentleman called. Thomas Sowell. Yes. He says, when you want to help people, yeah. you tell them the truth. Mm. And when you want to help yourself, mm. you tell them what they want to hear. Mm. Hi, William Ruto. <laughs> Have a great evening. God bless. <laughs>